in my in my window boxes were this beautiful Trita Scantia Nanook and my husband loves this plant. I overwintered this last year, different pieces of it, and then I brought it out in the spring and it worked wonderfully. This Tradescanthia likes to creep and I'm going to try to just keep it in one pot versus having to do a bunch of cuttings, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to do that now. This compost is a little pre-moistened, so when I stick the cuttings in, I'm not going to water. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to let it go bone dry. I don't know when I'll water it. I probably, you know, maybe I can get away with not watering it at all. It is it's succulent after all. The other type of tree scanty I have, and I have different cuttings throughout my landscape. This is Zabrina. Tradescanthia. It's a little bit different. The Nanook has a little bit more of a white color to it. But this one grows really good too, and I'll probably take some cuttings of this. So what I'm going to do is bring my compost bin a little bit closer so I can strip so I can strip some of these lower leaves off. And I'm simply just going to stick it in the pot just like that. Because that's all it takes. This thing will rut like crazy. It will rut absolutely like crazy. And in the spring, I will dig up what I can. And even in the dead of winter, if it starts to get kind of wily, I could take cuttings then and put it in another propagation box in the house. This stuff grows super easy, especially outdoors. I had this on my front porch, which only gets morning sun just a little bit. It's pretty covered and so it's tend to grow pretty good there. I have so much of this. Look at how much I've got. It's just crazy. So it snaps really easy and just peel some of the leaves off, get you to the nodes, shove them in the soil and away, away we're gonna go. I like purple. You can tell <laughs> a lot of purple in here. Stuff that I'm working on. Again, it's just such an easy process. This is how I'm going to overwinter this. And they they work really good as, as house plants too. A lot of people grow them just as house plants, but I'm going to break them into smaller pieces like this. So I have more individual rooting going on. And it's going to make a beautiful container for my house. Kind of nice. Yeah. So that is one full bowl of Tradescantia. One of the plants that I had in a container as well was this Coraline. I actually have three of these. This one in particular, I took that container and I simply just cut it off. The way the stem looks on this, this looks to me like the Dracaena. I think this is a member of the Dracaena family. I'm not 100% sure I could look it up and put the answer on screen. But because it's got these little leaflet ridges, that means it's going to be a little bit more drought tolerant, which I believe it is. I've done cuttings on things and propagated things that have this type of a leaf node system. And with that being said, it'll take four months or more for this to root, which is perfect. I could have dug out the soil, but again, I'm trying to take less soil in my house, not more. I got some leaves I can pull off here too that are just looking a little sad. So what I decided to do is to stick it in this container here, which will create kind of a nice little vignette. I'll just see how short I should make it. I want to get it down. So I'm going to take a couple more inches off. But I really want it to set pretty low. I want it to be up to here. I want it to be up to there. So I'm going to take about three or four inches off. And then I'm going to stick that in the soil too, and maybe that wood will root. Don't know. We're going to find out. This will allow me to take a couple more of these leaves off too. So again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to sink this in the center of this pot, which is kind of nice. And I'll just take this other one. I'll sink this in too. I'll leave about an inch above the ground. I'm not going to use any rooting hormone. We're just going to 
give it a go, see how it turns out. Right now, it looks pretty good for simply overwintering. It looks pretty good for simply going to overwinter and just have some cuttings, none of which have roots. So it's going to be fun to see how this turns out. Again, it's like four to, I, I have a very long winter. I have seven, eight, seven to eight months of winter here that I have to deal with before I could put anything back outside. So four to six months for something to get roots, not a problem. It will work just fine. But I think it looks beautiful. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Do you like this one? Or do you like some of the other ones I did? Let me know. I think it's beautiful. So if you don't have time to pot stuff up, or if you're out of potting soil, like I'm getting really close to being out of potting soil, so I'm going to pick and choose what I'm going to do for the rest of today. What you can do is grab an old pickle jar, olive jar, grab an old jar, do some recycling, add some water, And just go ahead and stick some things in the jar. You can always come back and pot stuff up later if you don't have time. So here is the the other tree to scant the and I'm going to remove the soil stuff like that and I'm simply going to put this in water. Tree to scant the will root really well in water as well. I'm just going to make some cuts. I'm just going to break a couple of these apart, knowing what your end is up. Set this in the water as well. Set these in the water. Got a little dirt in there. I'll clean it up later. Sometimes doing this in a shallow bowl is good too. I'm just going to put these little pieces that can go. In here, like I said, I got dirt in the water. I'll have to get that cleaned out. And then what I'm going to do? This is a potato, sweet potato vine. And much to my surprise, there is actually sweet potatoes or something that resembles sweet potatoes attached to it. I've never seen them do that before. I thought that was interesting. What I'm going to do is a couple things. I'm going to cut these vines down. I will leave a couple of stems on there, and I think I will repot these up. And then these I'm going to clean up a little bit. The other thing I may do is when I take it in the house is dunk the whole stem in dish, Dawn dish soap, like soapy water. That helps you get any other insects off there too. You can, I can spray it with, I can spray it with my rubbing alcohol, but I don't think I'm going to for this. I'm going to set this pot somewhere in the greenhouse here just to set for a few days while I continue working on my more important things. All right, it's a new day and I'm still continuing my fall cleanup, getting ready for winter, which is about uh, seven to 10 days away. It looks like we're gonna have a really hard frost. So I've really got to stick to my guns and try to get as much done as possible. I dug this beauty, which is a lemon coral sedum out of one of my planters, which was by my front door. So what I've done is I've put this in this container here, which I think is kind of a nice container. And I basically planted it up uh, late yesterday, but so this one is going to go in my house as well. And it's just fun. If I don't kill it, I tend to kill succulents. So and sedum is a succulent. So we'll see how it goes. If I just remember just to don't water it, maybe it'll be fine. So that's, that's for that one. The other thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to pot up these wild cucumbers. And I'm going to show you what they look like. So the pods are a little, pokey things like this. These are not edible cucumbers. They're ornamental. And then I picked three of them because I knew the seeds were going to expel. And so the seeds expelled out of there. They look like watermelon seeds. I thought that was interesting. And the seed pots are very pokey. And then what they do is they open up. So I'm going to come a little bit closer to the camera so you can see this. So hopefully you can see this. The seeds, so that's what the pods look like. I'll try to pick it up without getting poked. And then they they hollow out. They just explode and expel the seeds. So I picked them when they were just about ready to open. And I put them in a paper bag and just forgot about them. And it worked wonderful. They expelled. 
they opened up and expelled and they were captured and the seeds have already dried. You can see how the seeds are still coming out of there. This is what the seeds look like and to me they look just like watermelon seeds. So I'm going to plant these by the smokehouse garden, not the pods obviously. I just put these in the recycling in the compost. But we'll plant these seeds along that area and it should work out really good. They have a really nice limey green color to them and they creep over buildings. Sometimes you see them over old buildings. So as I said, they're not edible, but hopefully they grow really well. I can hardly wait to see how they turn out. So I'll take you out there and we'll do that in a little bit. So it should look pretty good. So what I have planted in here right now, on this right here, these are hollyhocks I have planted in here. And then I have some creeping flock creeping flax on the front end. I'm going to plant these about six to eight inches off the side of the building and if the hollyhocks come every year, hopefully this is a perennial variety, I don't remember, but if the hollyhocks come and they grow really nice and tall then it gives the vine something to climb up as well which is kind of neat. So I'm going to plant these just like I would plant watermelon or, or cucumbers for that matter. I'm just going to pick, poke a one inch hole in the ground and bury them. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've got 11 of them. So if half of them make, it'll be fine. So I'm going to make holes with this sturdy bamboo because the ground is just a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. This is a combination of clay and sand in here. It should do really well for these sweet potato vines. Yeah, that's just full of wildflowers from the other area, so it's going to be beautiful in the spring with Dame's Rocket blooming. So quite a simple process. Um, hopefully they have a good winter and they come up really nice for us in the spring. So we'll check back next year and see how I did. So if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share this content with others. Also consider subscribing so you don't miss any of our other great videos. If you enjoy propagations, check out the playlist below. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.